Hi everyone! I am so excited for our video today mainly because I'm going to be talking about something that I got in Japan and it is actually this product and this is called Benny. So this is the traditional form of rouge in Japan. So I have been very intrigued by Benny for a very long time ever since I first saw this uh, being featured on a Japanese TV show that I saw back in 2016 and I said to myself I want to try this so take a look at that so yes this is rouge you heard me correctly so don't be surprised with a greenish golden tint that you see here because as soon as I activate this with water the red pigments will come out. Now this Benny I actually bought at the Benny Museum when I was in Tokyo back in like you know um, March 25th I believe and um, if you're interested to see me go to the Benny Museum and to um, like you know go around and take a look and to know the other surprises that I see when I was there. I'm gonna put a link down in the description box to that video so you can see what I am talking about. And I do have to say if you are a makeup history nerd or just like you know a makeup buff, if you find yourself in Tokyo, head over to the Benny Museum. It is a must I have to say. So yes this Benny here is technically called Komachi Benny and the main reason why is because Komachi means ancient and Benny means like you know deep red or crimson and the reason why this is labeled as such is because this product is actually produced by Isehan Honten the same company that runs the Benny Museum and they are the only company in Japan right now that continues to make Benny using traditional methods now um, when I was at the Benny Museum there was a brief description there on how Benny was made but they don't actually tell you in detail and of course it's a secret because they make money out of this and I have to say it's actually quite pricey and um, I also read there that this production process was actually handed down orally from one generation to another so can you imagine um, how good this product is basing on oral history to come out with this kind of a quality product that we see here right now so it's actually quite amazing and by the way Isehan Honten has been making Benny since 1825 so they've been around for a very very long time. Now how is Benny made? So Benny is actually made by extracting the pigments from the petals of the safflower. Now don't be surprised because if you know how a safflower looks like they're actually um, you know they have yellow petals but those petals contain 1% of red pigments and I think through the process of washing and fermentation Isan Honten was actually able to um, squeeze out the red pigments from that and apparently you need a thousand safflowers to make one Benny and I have to say that's a lot of flowers for a very small product it's quite small if we're going to if I'm going to put this at the palm of my hand can you see that but what's so amazing to me is that you know how can a yellow flower produce red pigment but when it's dry it looks green so um, I, I think the world is you know simply amazing nature has many secrets that we have yet to discover but anywho um, so if you just want to know more about the Benny Museum and the process of making Benny I'm gonna put a link down in the description box to their website and I think they also have a few videos up on their YouTube channel so you can go and check that out because um, I don't want to talk about it much because when I went to the Benny Museum um, English translations were uh, very limited and I don't want to get the information out wrong there and I and I do believe that everything that you want to know about Benny and the Benny Museum is listed in their website so please go and check that out so all that we will be doing today is to try out this Benny. Now before I dip my brush into this porcelain cup, let's take a closer look into this product. So this is how the Benny looks like under the sun. Can you guys just see how magnificent this is and just how reflective and shiny it is? I mean there's a halo coming out on top of the product. It's actually quite a sight to behold I have to say. Now the porcelain cup is an Arita Ware porcelain so this is made in Arita and it's just simply beautiful and there's a stamping here at the very bottom of the cup and this actually reads as Isehan Honten so it's the stamp of the brand. Now this is the design that you will see around the entire porcelain cup. It's very beautiful and I just love like you know how this blue color here fades into the white as it nears the tips. Now there's this like you know drawing here of like a silver kind of a wave pattern but this is actually the pattern for the wind and this is obvious because you can see some sakura petals falling or like you know following this um, 
representation of the wind. And of course, you can see Sakura decorated around the entire cup. You have it in golds, in silvers, and in even like a shade of red. So, yep, this is how Benny looks like up close and personal. So yeah, in looking at this Benny, I am quite amazed to see how well this has been made. Like, you know, um, the product here has actually been painted on into this porcelain cup. And I'm not kidding when I say that it has been painted on because if you take a look at the pamphlet here, you can see the artisan here painting on the pigments that was actually extracted by the artisan. And as you guys can see, it's red there because it's it was still wet when they did this and I have to say this is a very well-made product because if we just take a look at it closer here look how smooth that is there are no bubbles there are no ripples nothing it's very very smooth it looks like it's like you know some sort of like a like you know gold foil that has been applied into the porcelain cup so I'm um, again I am amazed and my mind is actually blown now, by the way, this is not the only Komachi Benny product that Isehan Honten sells at the Benny Museum. So they have various types. Um, they also have various price points and they actually have a gift set including a Kumano Fuda brush. And if I'm not mistaken, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name properly, I think the brushes that they sell in tandem with their Benny is from the brand uh, Curedo. Um, so um, I have not tried that brush yet and I have like you know heard of that brush company um, in passing so now that I have been to the Benny Museum I think I'm gonna check that brand out. Now very briefly let me show you the other types of Komachi Benny products that they sell at the museum. So this is what I have. This is the um, Sakura uh, Komachi Benny and this is the Fuji Komachi Benny and this is the Hana Komachi Benny. So these two are the ones that have a cover. Now I didn't purchase any of these two because it was actually quite expensive so i decided to get this mainly because of the sakura print and also it actually like you know it's more traditional in um the sense because when benny was available you know back during the edo period around like you know the 1600s or the 1800s um all the bennies were sold like this and the way that you actually store this in your like you know dressing table or your makeup kit is you actually put it um, just like on top of the table so just to avoid um, the product from oxidizing way too much but um, according to the Benny Museum um, you don't really have to worry about the oxidation process of um, the product um, I think it just tarnishes a bit it loses its um, vivid color um, on the porcelain cup but it doesn't lose its like you know very amazing red pigments once you apply it with water on your face now they also have other Komachi Benny products so these are like you know on the go products and I think this is made of um, paper if I am not mistaken I'm just going to flip over this one is also very very expensive um, I I couldn't dare to purchase this so this is the Kumano Fude brush that they have by the way and these are the sets that they actually sell in the Benny Museum as well now um, also one other thing um, I think um, these products are being sold at a very limited um, quantity, so sometimes they r do run out of stock um, extremely fast. So I consider myself to be very lucky that when I went to the Benny Museum, I was able to get myself one Benny product. So uh, that's that. Um, this Benny, by the way, the Sakura Benny, cost 15,000 yen without taxes. So um, it's actually quite expensive, but I don't mind purchasing this because it's actually my 41st birthday today. So this is actually uh, my birthday birthday gift to myself so um, I'm actually glad that I have this I'm very very happy to have gotten this now what I found so amazing about going to the Benny Museum is that I was also able to see some of the ukiyo-e woodblock prints and it actually showed or it actually captured the way Japanese women at the time used Benny and you can also see it here in the pamphlet wherein this lady here is actually applying Benny on her eyes, cheeks, lips, and even on her fingers. So um, it's actually quite amazing, you know, this type of a uh, beauty routine at that time. And it also comes to show that um, even to this day, it still is the same. It's all about the eyes, lips, cheeks, fingers, not so much because we have manicures now. But again, like, you know, throughout time, beauty rituals, I think, has stayed the same. All right, so let's apply this Benny. So I have here a... Um, lip brush so this is not from Curiedo I hope I'm pronouncing that right um, this is actually 
from uh, Hayakusuke. I bought this at a makeup store in Asakusa in 2011. And it was actually a shop that sold a lot of um, makeup to kabuki actors and geishas in the Asakusa district in Tokyo. Now, anywho, so um, according to the pamphlet and just based on my observation when I was at the Benny Museum, um, you don't actually spray this with water or like, you know, splash water into the cup or else you might ruin it. What you do is actually you dip the brush into like, you know, a saucer of water, just enough to dampen the brush here. And then you actually start by tapping on the side of the saucer here. Can you guys see that? Oh wow. So it's actually turning red and what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Benny onto my lips. Now the Benny has no scent whatsoever and the texture of this is not creamy at all. Now it actually reminds me of the texture in such a way on how watercolor gets dissolved as soon as you apply a damp brush on it. So it's kind of like that for me. Now the Benny actually feels cooling on my lips but I attribute that to the water and it is actually very easy to spread and it glides effortlessly on the lips. So I just have to be very careful with my application especially if I want to be very precise with this. Hmm, that's a very nice light stain, like you know, very wearable color, very pretty. I like that. That's a very nice lip stain. I like this color. You know, it's not even red, but it has a very nice, like you know, light pink stain. And according to um, the pamphlet, you can actually build to the intensity that you want depending on how much water you actually add into the Benny. So let's just build up the intensity. But I love it. Um, by the way, I do have to say that I was actually wearing a clear lip balm from DHC, the one that I bought in Don Quixote that I showed you in my haul recently. And um, should I have removed it before applying the Benny? It doesn't really matter, I think. But um, what's surprising to me is that this product is actually water activated. So, and I think it's vegan because after all, this is made from pigments of the safflower. So look at that. So let's pick up more. And what's so amazing to me is that as I continue to pick up the product from the porcelain cup here, you're actually removing a lot of the Komachi Benny from the porcelain cup. Once you use this up, you're going to use up everything and there will be no product left on the porcelain cup. How cool is that? Okay, so this is another layer of Benny on my lips. Mm. So the color has now intensified and it's still not super red, but you can already see like this depth of the color is already coming out. So um, it's actually quite pretty, I do have to say. And it actually feels comfortable on my lips. It doesn't feel drying. Like, you know, the way some of those lip stains feel on your lips. It's actually quite surprising to me. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? I love it. Okay, so let's try this some more. So I've just dipped my brush into the saucer with some water. And let me just continue to get some of the Benny here. So it has intensified quite nicely and when you layer the color on your lips it's actually quite even it's not patchy which is actually quite amazing now um, what I want to do is I just want to let this dry a little bit on my lips because I want to see if the greenish tint here is going to come out once this has dried and I also want to see how it looks like on their lips and how it feels like once it has dried down a little bit. So what I want to talk about actually is um, this, I took this out of my archives um, here in my drawer and this is actually a product that I have had since um, 2010 
or thereabouts and this is actually the NARS bento box collection so let me just open this and show this to you guys so there are actually two black saucers here so this is it and if we just open this we can see lipstick in this pot so the other color is red so i think this is named sakura of course because this is pink and this is named uh, maiko of course because it's red so in me looking at this now we know where nars actually got his inspiration from and it's actually from the benny so um i think only a very limited number of this product was sold back in the day and i'm so lucky that i was able to have it i actually used it for work uh, one time but i decided not to use it um, extensively because um i wanted to save it like you know for posterity but it was actually very nice um i do remember that the consistency of this was very nice and creamy and actually like you know layered very well on the lips now what's so amazing to me is that mm, it smells like crayons now now that I just smelled it. And what's amazing to me at this day and age is that I don't see any um, form of molding that is happening on these two lipsticks. The way that some lipsticks um, do have mold very, very easily with the new formulations that we have out today. So I prefer the formulations of old than the new formulations that we have at this time. So um, yeah, so this is the NARS Bento Box collection. Now the other product that I am reminded of, like you know, which to me is very similar to the Benny, but like you know, just a different type of process. It's actually the um, Lacar Fasi that I bought in Morocco when I went there last year. So let me just get it here from my display, and this is it. So this is Acar Fasi, Lacar Fasi, or Acar Fasi. But this one is very different from the Benny that we see here, wherein this one is made from the pigments of the poppy flower while this one is from the safflower but i do remember seeing some ladies on youtube i think it was erin parson her ochre fossey actually had a greenish tint to it so maybe that one was made from um safflowers instead of like you know the poppy flower but um like you know the process of these two in terms of application is the same wherein you activate this um, with water so if you want to see me use this and to see this in action i'm going to put a link down in my description box to that video and i'm going to put the timestamp there as well so that you can skip um, right into the application process of this acar fasi so um, again like you know it's so amazing to me like you know how different cultures have different beauty routines and i consider myself lucky to have like you know encountered them in this lifetime so um, i'm so grateful i'm so grateful for this All right so um my lips have dried down a little bit but I don't see any green tint coming out yet. Maybe if I add another layer. So let us do that. So I'm going to dip my brush again into my water here. And maybe if I pick up a much more generous amount of Benny and apply it on my lips. So it's actually quite easy to layer the Benny. There's no texture that's forming on my lip. Mm -hmm. So the more water you use, the more pigment you pick up and the more pigment you deliver into the lips and it's starting to become quite vibrant at the moment quite pretty it has intensified quite nicely so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to continue to layer the benny properly and you know just spread it evenly and i'm also going to try to be more detailed in my application of the benny and so far i have to say that even if this is i'm using water for this um it's not bleeding into like you know the outer portions of my lip line so which again is very astonishing for me oh wow so it has really like you know gotten quite intense but not overly so which is actually quite surprising and the pigment of this red is actually like you know a little bit bluish because the pigment from the the car fossey is actually quite bright like you know and very warm so it was actually quite yellow but this one is more moody i have to say and i think maybe it's because it has a blue tint and the reason why i'm saying this is because this actually has like you know a greenish tint here especially when it actually dries so um, i'm hoping that we'll be able to see this green tint 
um, today. So um, I'm going to stop adding more layers and hopefully when it dries, it's going to show up. So let's use the Benny in another way. So with my brush here, I'm going to pick up the remaining tint here that is showing on the porcelain cup. And I'm going to use this as blush. Now, I am actually not wearing any foundation today. And um, that's the main reason why. It's because I actually want to see how we can apply this like, you know, as a sort of tint on the skin. Oh wow, it's actually going on very nicely and it's actually spreading very well and I love that it's actually you know, giving this very nice mauve tone on the skin. And as I'm continuing to blend the product with my fingers, I don't see any patchiness because sometimes that's what I see and like, you know, I find difficulty with, with when I am using like, you know, a lot of this, like, you know, tinted blushes because you see a lot of lifting, but with this one, none at all. And I love the color that you see here, very nice flush. And again, it's working very well with the undertones of my skin. And it's actually blending quite nicely and you can actually do it, I think, you know, in no time. So let's add a little bit of that here on my other cheek. So yes, I'm applying the product with a brush because that's how it is indicated on the pamphlet. So if you have dry skin, I think maybe this might be an issue for you, especially if you want to blend it out. So maybe adding a little bit of some moisturizer prior can really help with the blending because um, again, you are using water to activate the pigments of the Benny. So um, water evaporates very fast on the skin. So at least maybe adding some moisturizer or maybe glycerin might work. It's actually quite interesting. Look at that. Very nice flush of color. Very vibrant, I have to say, and also has a very nice brightening quality to it. Well, it's actually quite lovely. All right, so that's actually very nice. I love it. We have this very nice vibrant lip and we have a very nice muted cheek color. So that's actually quite amazing. So, all right, so um, at this point, I actually want to apply a little bit of this on the eyes. So like now, let's just play along with this product and the way that they have been used throughout history. And I'm just using the same brush with this. And I'm gonna apply it quite generously all over my eyelid and use my finger to blend it out. Ooh. This is actually quite subtle, but we can see that it's giving some color into my eyelids already. Hmm. That's actually quite nice. So let me just add that here on the other eye now. This is actually nice, not a bad base product, I have to say, but like, you know, I don't think I'm going to be using this color for my eyes, mainly because like, you know, if you're using way too much red or way too much pink, um, it might be a little bit like, you know, it's going to look like you are, you have like a you know, pink eye or you're sick or you're like feverish. But um, I do have to say now that I'm looking here straight into my camera, it actually has a very nice brightening quality, which I like, and it's giving this mauve tone. So I think that's um, what's happening when it's reacting to the natural shadows of my eyelids and also the green tones of my skin. Very pretty, very nice. Hmm, that's actually quite pretty. I wasn't expecting this kind of like, you know, an outcome with just one product. So if you're someone who likes to wear very minimal makeup and you don't want a lot of products with you, and if you just want to use one product all over the face, this is actually great. At least, you know, with this and with some water, you can have a lip color, a blush color, and an eye color. Now, does the Benny product actually stay on the skin? Yeah, I, yes, it does. Now, um, in my video of me going to the Benny Museum, um, you actually saw... Um, a lady applied the Benny into her hand with a lip brush. Um, I actually stopped filming um, a few seconds right after because um, like, you know, just the way that the lights at the background were making the video quality bad and it was also um, creating a lot of twitching um, motions on the video. So I decided that's why I decided to stop. But she actually ran her finger on like, you know, the 
the product and it actually stayed it didn't budge now with this product that i have on my lips right now i'm sure it's going to transfer because i have some lip balm so it, it's not actually drying so let me just show you see so we can see some transferring but here on my finger if we are just going to rub it here on my hand we can see that it is not transferring at all so once the product actually sets it sets down quite nicely but if you layer it with some like you know lip balm things like that um it i'm sure it will not set the same way it will set if you just like you know apply it directly on like you know dry skin so with that being said um According to the pamphlet here, you can also layer Benny with your favorite lip balm or even a lip gloss. So this is the lip balm that I used earlier. So why don't we just apply it right on top of the Benny. Now we can see that the Benny here has taken a new form. So it has a much more uh, dewier look to it and it's also giving its very nice vibrant appearance so at least we have a very nice versatile product um, in our hands today and also you can actually apply lip gloss on top of this so i have here a uh, sparkly lip gloss and i am just going to apply a hint of this on top of the lip product okay and just like that in using this sparkly silvery lip gloss the benny has morphed and it has more dimension now so at least we know that this product is actually quite versatile so if you're someone who has a lot of lip gloss in your collection like you know mixing benny and like you know some other colors can give you like a very nice bespoke color um that might work for you so that's actually quite amazing to me all right, so I guess that's my vlog for today. Uh, before I go, by the way, I mentioned earlier that the porcelain cup here is made from Arita. So let me just show you one other product that I have here in my collection that comes from the same area where the porcelain cup comes from. And it's actually the um, Hachiko um, brush here from Beautylish and this is also um, Arita porcelain. So both of these are actually made in the same area. So uh, at least now you guys um, will understand why um, this product is quite pricey because not only is the process of extracting the Benny pigments quite pricey but the packaging is also quite expensive all right so yeah so that's my vlog for today i hope that you guys enjoyed this and if you have any questions about benny or my adventures in japan uh, please leave them in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it all right so i'm gonna let you go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye bye